talking to some GPs, they say, well, I, I don't routinely just do a PSA. Uh, they try to tweak it a bit or they do a, a series of PSAs three months apart and look for a rise in PSA. Is there any other ways we can, which evidence shows we can use these tests to, to um, more accurately pick which cancers are going to be the aggressive ones? Um, unfortunately, not from the PSA or, uh, alone. Um, really, it takes the, the biopsy to do that. So we are getting better at that. It's still imperfect. But um, looking at things like the Gleason score, for example, we can detect which are the more and less aggressive um, cancers. And the Australian trend is, is to leave uh, more of these alone and watch them. There's been a big move now to what's known as active surveillance. Mm. Uh, that is, it, we're recognising that these men have low-grade cancer, which is unlikely to cause them any problem. And we also understand that if a small percentage of them may actually progress. We can't actually identify quite who they are. So what happens is that these men are put onto this surveillance program where they have their PSA regularly, and then maybe every year or two, they're having a biopsy of their prostate again to see whether there's any change in the volume or the nature of the cancer to suggest that maybe they would benefit from some surgery. It sounds like a fairly sensible middle path, the active surveillance. The problem with active surveillance is that it isn't quite as benign as everybody would like to believe. And there's been some recent studies of men uh, who are on active surveillance for some time to show that they have increasing rates of impotence despite nothing having been done to them and also increasing rates of anxiety and depression. Do we need a better test basically than the PSA? Mm. It's interesting that the guy who invented the PSA has described it as one of the, that he regrets inventing it and that it's been one of the biggest public health disasters in the US. Mm. I mean, wish he could withdraw his invention. <laughs> <laughs> when I have discussed this with other GPs who say they wouldn't usually recommend a screening PSA, um, a number of them have mentioned, oh, unless there are urinary symptoms. How do you see that fitting in? In this particular disease, there is no correlation between a man who has lower urinary tract symptoms and the risk that he has prostate cancer. So lower urinary tract symptoms are not an indication for ordering a PSA? Absolutely not.